Hey church, I thought I'd start off by just showing off my brand new face mask, courtesy of my friend Amanda Haney, who's also a fellow impactor, and she makes these. So if you need some, hit her up on social media. But the purpose of this video is to communicate our plans for taking step four as a church and our overall plan uh, for regathering with our in-person services. And so this week, we got some news from our governor that the county that the church is in, Licking County, uh, went from a level two to a level three. There were also several other counties that went from a level two to a level three. And there were some counties that went from a level three down to a level two. And so what it's creating is a lot of volatility. And what it appears to be based on the way these numbers are being uh, calculated and the way that this level system is set up, um, uh, set up to work is that the level that we're in as a county could change from week to week. And because of that, it just creates a lot of unpredictability, a lot of uncertainty. And with that comes just stress and pressure and anxiety. I also received a message from our local school district this week with uh, the plans for going back to school. And it's tied to this uh, county level system. And so if we're at a certain level, uh, the kids will come to school in person, um, wear masks and have other safety measures in place. At another level, um, the students go back to online only, very similar to what we were like in the spring. And as a parent, that's really challenging on us. That's really hard to plan for. And it just puts an extreme amount of um, just uncertainty in the household. And so one of the things that I've learned here recently um, comes from being a boat captain. A couple years ago, Mindy and I purchased a boat as a way for our family to spend quality time together in the summer. And if I'm driving my boat and it's full of people and I happen to hit the accelerator real fast and I don't warn anyone, what happens is people sort of they lose their balance. They could potentially fall out of their seat. And the opposite is true. If I decelerate too quickly, people can also fall out of their seat. But even worse, if the boat is moving really quickly and I turn the boat without warning anyone and I change directions too fast, especially with little kids, there's the potential that someone could even fall out of the boat. And as the captain of this ship that we call Impact City, which 500 or so people consider it their church home, if we change directions too quickly or we stop and start without enough notice, what happens is people fall out of balance. They fall out of the habit and they could even fall out of the boat. And that's something that concerns me. And so we're going to do everything that we can to create safe and predictable environments so that when you come to church, you know what to expect. Regardless of what the level system is showing, you know what to expect at church on Sunday mornings. And I think that's something that we're all craving right now. Now, as I share with you our plans for this weekend and our plans for step, taking step forward next Sunday, July 26th, I realize that not everyone is going to like this plan. And a lot of people are going to have an opinion on what we should and shouldn't be doing at church. But I would just encourage you with this. Stay in the boat. Trust the process. All right, We have prayerfully and painstakingly through many, many uh, planning sessions with lots of details and lots of considerations, we believe we have a plan that considers everyone. We've considered all of you, regardless of where you are on the spectrum and the way that you're interpreting everything happening in our world right now. We truly believe that we've created an environment where you can come to church and you can connect to God. We're going to remove as many hindrances as we can, yet also create a safe and predictable environment for you. So I first want to start off by sharing with you what our plans are for step four, which will take place on Sunday, July 26th. After that, I will give some reminders on what our plans are for this Sunday, July 19th. So in step four, we're going to be adding 
a special service. This is a service where we're taking extra care. This service is going to take place at 8.30. It'll be the first service of the, of, the, of the day. Therefore, the building will be the cleanest. And also, when you show up for this 8.30 service starting next Sunday, all the staff and volunteers will be wearing face coverings. We're also going to ask that all of our attendees wear face coverings for that service. If you forget yours, we'll have extra available on site. Now, one of the notes I just want to make, um, you know, we're going to be just as mindful as restaurants are and, you know, the airlines are that once you get to your seat, if you'd like to, you know, enjoy a cup of coffee that you brought with you or you'd like to eat the complimentary donuts you got on the way in, you're welcome to remove your mask to enjoy your snack and your beverage. And then you can put that back on uh, once you're done. Um, I know that makes sense to all of us. Um, also, for our 830 extra care service, there will be no kid city. However, your kids are still welcome to come. You can bring them into the service with you. We would just ask that they would also be wearing a face covering as long as it's age appropriate. I know my one-year-old baby Pixie probably isn't going to keep a mask on her face, but uh, you get the idea. We'll also keep our mother's room open, so if you need to step in there with an infant, you're able to do that. Um, now, also as part of our step four plans is if you would come to the 10 o'clock service or the 11.30 service, or let's just say a new family shows up at 10 o'clock or 11.30, and if they're uncomfortable for any reason, maybe they just show up and they feel like there's just too many people inside, what we've created, and this is new, is an outdoor streaming area. So we're going to have a tent with some tables and chairs underneath it where people can just step outside and they can watch a live, uh, watch the service live during the 10 o'clock and 1130 service. And so that's just an extra step um, that we're taking for you and the families that are going to be attending. Now, this step four, all of these measures that I just shared with you are in addition to all the measures we've already taken as part of our step three plan. So if you were here this past Sunday, which was amazing, by the way, it felt so good to be worshiping in person with you again. And we had about 70% of our usual attendance, which was really encouraging. You know, it wasn't packed. There's, you know, it wasn't overcrowded. There was definitely still room for people to come in and enjoy um, the service in a comfortable way. Um, but if you were here, you would have noticed some of the changes that we've made. But just to be clear, I want to remind you what measures we've already taken in step three. And these are the measures that we're taking this Sunday uh, to create a safe and predictable environment for you. Um, the first one is that greeters will be waving signs rather than shaking hands at the door. We're going to have wristbands available in three colors. So as you arrive, you can choose um, three different wristbands. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a green one, there's a yellow one, and there's a red one. And each of them indicate your level of comfort, and there's instructions when you arrive on which one to wear. We're also going to be giving out free hand sanitizer for all that attend. So we encourage you to you know, use that hand sanitizer and take it home with you. We have contactless check-in for our kids' team. And so as you arrive with your kids, you won't have to touch any technology. You just say your kids' names and a team member will assist you. Um, we also ask that only one of the parents uh, go back to drop off and pick up their kids just to limit traffic in the Kid City hallways. Um, we're changing the way we do our hospitality. So instead of, you know, self-serve coffee and Timbits, um, we're going to be passing out on the way in um, prepackaged donuts and bottles of water. Feel free to bring your own coffee. Uh, there's no meet and greet time in between the service, um, excuse me, in between music and the message. Uh, we've removed that intermission. There'll be no passing of the offering baskets. And someone said, Amen. <laughs> now, there, there is still the opportunity uh, to give a donation in person if you would like, but we have a drop box, a donation box in the back, so we won't be passing baskets. Uh, you can also continue to give online and by text if you prefer. Our prayer team will be available after service. Uh, however, they will be wearing masks for your comfort. Also, we've, uh, uh, we've adjusted the seating in the sanctuary, and so we've spaced out the rows uh, for your comfort. 
And uh, so really, and several people made mention of this, we went from giving you economy class legroom to first class legroom, and no one is complaining <laughs> about that. And so those are the plans that we have for adding a service and the steps that were already taken to create a safe and predictable environment for you. You're saying, okay, well, Justin, well, what about that 10 o'clock and the 1130 service? During that service, we are recommending that you follow the local authorities and our governor's advice on face coverings. So they're recommended, but they're not required. We're not going to enforce whether or not you wear a mask. We trust that you are staying up to date uh, with all the information that's being shared with Ohioans and with those in our county and that you're going to make a decision that's best for you and your family. Um, now, I, I recommend and I encourage you to do what the governor recommends. But at church, we're not going to turn anyone away and we're not going to require you to wear a mask if you don't have one. Now, I realize that some of you, that makes you uncomfortable. But remember, we've created an environment for you. We've added a service that is specifically for you and your family so that you don't have to come to church and feel uncomfortable. We've also added an outdoor streaming area so that if you can't make it to the 830 service, you can still come to church and see some of your, some of your friends in an environment that's maybe more um, conducive for your social distancing preferences. Now, we believe that this is going to be the best plan for us, and it's sustainable through the fall. Regardless of what level we're at, we are able to continue worshiping our God in a safe and predictable way. Now, certainly, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to gather information, and if our 830 service is extremely popular and by demand we need more room, then we'll add a, an identical service for, uh, you know, just like the 830 service. We'll continue to adjust to the needs of our church body. But what we don't want to do is to just change directions from week to week, to be stopping and starting all the time, because we realize it just creates instability, and it's just not the best environment for us um, uh, to do church together. And so I just appreciate each and every one of you uh, for walking through this season with honor. For those of you that are most vulnerable, or that you're uncomfortable, we absolutely strongly recommend that you either come to our 830 service, you view in our outdoor streaming area, or you continue to watch online. There's no pressure and there's no rush. At the same time, for those of you that uh, you are very comfortable with in-person gatherings, then we encourage you to come to the 10 o'clock and the 1130 service. Now, Here's what we can't do, church. This world is incredibly divided right now. We can't allow this system, right, this leveling system to become a thing that divides us. And we can't allow a piece of cloth or a piece of paper be the thing that divides God's people, right? We are called to be in unity. We are called to be of one heart and of one mind. We are to love one another, and we are to express and extend grace to those that maybe think differently and at times even believe differently than us. So there's not going to be any shaming. There's not going to be any guilting. And there's not going to be um, you know, just any uh, divisive um, tactics that could be a hindrance to those uh, that are worshiping here on a Sunday. So I appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, to understand our plan. Um, we are moving forward with step four. This was originally going to take place at the end of August, but we've moved it up to July 26th uh, just because of all the news that we had this week. However, this Sunday is going to be just like last Sunday. Uh, face masks are recommended. We encourage you to do what the governor is asking you to do, but they will not be required. And I just appreciate you guys all understanding that. So God bless you. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach me directly at justin at impactcity.church. I'd be happy to answer your questions. God bless.